having seen the newth morris pratt algorithm uh, from the previous video, we'll go on to the Boyer-Moore algorithm for looking for one string inside a very much larger string. Um, <clears throat> okay, and I'll just mention that uh, newth morris pratt was from around 1970, uh, uh, and Boyer-Moore came out, uh, improved on that around 1977. So let's go ahead and start with this. And uh, there are several ideas to Boyer Moore. Um, basically, we're going to look at uh, that same prefix idea uh, we did before in Newth Morris Pratt. Uh, and we're going to look at sort of a called a, a bad character heuristic. And then at every step, we're going to choose the better of those two suggestions of how far to shift over. And here's the, the coolest idea. It's so simple. Uh, when you're looking for the Nana inside a very large web page, don't start from the beginning looking for a B A N. Go to the very last letter and start looking for that. Okay. Let me give an example. Suppose we're looking for. I'm going to give a big long pattern word here. Uh, this is Big Bird's favorite word. If you know Sesame Street, Abkadevki Jekyllmanop Krstuvoxes. And we're going to look for that. And here is our string we're going to look for it in. X, 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 hash X, 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 A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay. Um, and actually, I, in this uh, string I'm looking for, note that it actually doesn't contain the E, F, G. So it doesn't contain the pattern. Okay. Uh, how might we proceed? We're going to go ahead and, hey, uh, again, I'm going to keep track of uh, the characters I've seen. Initially, I haven't seen any. I'm looking for the pattern, Apkadefagis, two wixes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the very first character. Okay? In the, or not, not the first character. The first character I looked at will be the one, the 26th character of the target string. Okay? Which in this case is a hash character that doesn't even occur in there. At this point, I know that if Abkadefagi, Jekyll, and two is in the string, it can't be starting at the any of the first 25 locations, or even the 26th location. It has to start at the 27th location at the very least. So this is a huge win. Uh, I'm going to go to down here. Actually, I can go ahead and let me scroll so that we're at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and look for the pattern, and I'm going to shift over. Um, 26 letters, okay? And now I'm going to go and go to the, again, now go off to like the 52nd letter or so of the input, and look, I'm looking for a Z. If I see a Z, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start scanning backwards. I'll come back to that. Uh, but I go to look for the 26th, and I see the letter M. And now this may be a little bit more realistic. It's like, okay, well, I didn't see, it didn't end in Z, so it, it can't be right here. Uh, and in fact, it can't even start one letter shifted over by one or two or three, uh, but it could be shifted over by about 13 or so. Uh, I'm going to slide my pattern over so that the M aligns, okay? So we call this a bad character match. I look for, I'm looking for the character Z and I find an M. It's a bad character. Um, and so I'm going to slide my pattern over so that the last occurrence of M in my pattern occurs here. So let me show that as what I do. I'll go shift, 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 and line it up so that M that I'm looking for is right under the M that I found. And now I'm going to say, okay, now resume. Go and go to the end of Z and look to see what I really see there. Okay. And it turns out I go ahead and I do see a Z. Well, in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and look. Go back up and say, okay, I found the Z at the end. Uh, do I see a Y? Yeah, I see a Y. I see an X. I see a W. I'm, and I'm just going to backwards, and I'm getting happier and happier. Like, yeah, it looks like I'm finding a match. It looks like I'm finding a match. I might even get it all the way to the end that I, M that I saw before. My algorithm is going to be simple. I'll just relook at the M. Say, yep, M is still what I'm looking for. Keep on backing up. Getting happier and happier. Uh, however, uh, there was no EFG. Uh, so if I look at that source string, the original string, I can copy it down here so we can, again, be sure that I'm not cheating. Uh, eventually I back up and I hit, I'm looking, now I'm looking for a G, but I, oh, I this time I find a D. That's another bad letter. So the bad letter heuristic says, hey, 
shift my pattern over so the D occurs underneath this thing here. So let me go ahead and copy paste some lines. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift my pattern over so that D lines up with the D that I just saw. Okay. And now I'll go back to the very end and I'll look for a Z. I start backing up, I actually see an actual J as well as the actual, and so at that point I might say, oh, J, hey, next step, shift over so that that J lines up, and wow, I'm going to go way off. Okay, so notice what I'm doing, this is really cool. Uh, when I'm looking for matches, when I find a miss, I shift way over, not just one or two or three, I shift over by maybe 25 or 26 letters, maybe by my entire pattern length, if I find a character that wasn't in the pattern at all. If I find a character that was in the pattern like M, I shift over to, it turns out, the last occurrence of M in the pattern, okay? So that is pretty cool. That's just a good trick, to, again, to have in your bag of tricks should you ever have to solve a big data problem that's not exactly string search. You just use a built-in library if that was your exact problem. Um, but you need to do something else, maybe find the exact matches or approximate matches in things that aren't strings but maybe a series of images or sound bites or something. Um, okay, so gosh, yeah, that's what we're gonna, that, that's a cool idea. Shift over by a whole lot each time. So um, Now I should mention that uh, if you're clever, when we went and found that uh, D and moved over to, to match the D, okay, that actually was a little bit weird because we're like, okay, we're matching the D, but you know, I know that after the D is H I J K L M N, and I what I need to be after there is not H I J K L M N. So there's a different rule. The, the bad character rule is one way to say, hey, you need to shift over by put it this way. If you shift over by this much, you won't miss any matches. You can shift over by this much. You might need to shift over more. Uh, there's also what we call is going to call the good suffix rule. Okay, uh, and that's going to be a way to shift even more. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, if you want to go through and on your own, just pause this video, work it out. Let's go back to that Ananab example uh, that we saw earlier and use Boyer Moore in this bad character rule. Um, so I have the string here. I haven't really looked at any characters of it yet. I want to find this pattern in it. Uh, and Again, for this uh, bad character rule, we need to do some pre-processing. I need to be given the string that I'm going to search for, and I need to go through and say, hey, for every character I might find, what is the last index of that character in the pattern? Okay, if I want to find the letter M, where do I need to go in my pattern to find the letter M? So, okay. Um, so what do you do? Let's go ahead and try it. What's the first character you look at? Now we'll go ahead and uh, do some copy-paste here, or maybe just scroll down. Um, copy-paste is good. First character I'm going to look at is going to be the last, if my pat is seven letters long, I'm going to look at the seventh letter of my input, and it's an A. Oh, that's not a B. So, and this is actually a bad character. I use that bad character, uh, in fact, if I have a bad miss on that first thing, the bad character reference uh, heuristics all I have, shift over by one. Okay, that's the bad character reference. Um, okay, now go ahead and look at the last character. So look above the B. And we see an N. I was like, oh, got to shift over uh, N. Shift over so an, the last N aligns with what we just saw. Okay, so we're actually shifting over by two this time. Okay, that's kind of cool. And now look at here, and we see, oh, we see another N. We'll shift over, so the last N, we're going to shift over another two, two at a time. Uh, go here. And now we go ahead and say, hey, look at the last letter. I'm looking for a B, and hey, this time I found a B. So back up. I found an A. Yep, I found an N. I found an A. Hey, I found my pattern. I back up, and so I really do come across it. And I had to shift. I shift. I think I shifted one, two, and two. So a total of um, three iterations through the loop. Okay. So uh, I have it all spelled out here in the notes of each of those steps. Okay. Um, Okay, da, 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 da. we need to keep track of KM, a table of size KM, or spend time KM to figure out this, this table. Um, okay, and we can do a little bit better. I have a little note in here. Again, I'm not going to worry about the details of it. You can study the algorithm and stub look at Wikipedia and go through it and see some of the little nuances that are adding to it. Okay, so that's one thing Boyer Moore does. They say the biggest thing is, hey, 
start from the end of the word and search forward, and when you find a miss, that you skip ahead a whole lot. Um, that's the bad bad letter heuristic. And then, like I mentioned, uh, so what do I have here? Um, if you just use this bad letter heuristic, it's actually, I guess, uh, could be called, Wikipedia suggests it's called the boyer moore horstel algorithm. I looked at Horstel's original paper. Um, he was looking at a slightly different question about uh, compl complicated instruction sets they had back in the 70s and 80s. Um, we don't have those now, so. Um, okay. But... Here's another little cool thing happening in your toolbox. He suggests, hey, you know, if your last, we do really well if the last letter is really uncommon in the source, because then we'll keep going forward, uh, being able to shift forward and not have to start backtracking. And he also sort of suggested, and again, I'll just throw this out there to be in your toolbox, should it ever be useful for some different problem you face. Uh, hey, go through that pattern and find a rare letter, an uncommon letter near the end. Okay, so he says, points out, use the letter X. Hey, X isn't very common. Uh, if your pattern entered in an X, A, C, E, A, C, E are all pretty common letters, maybe rather than looking for an E and shifting over from there, uh, you're going to be doing a lot of finding that E and then backtracking, maybe finding a C there, and backtracking. Um, hey, maybe search just for the X and start backtracking from that X, a rare letter near the end. That's going to have to, you almost always shift forward by maybe a whole lot. So, okay. Um, not necessarily by a whole lot, but it will have you shifting forward almost immediately every iteration. Okay, so again, that's kind of a, a clever idea. Um, boy or more, go backwards, use this bad character heuristic, and then here's what we can do. There's also this idea of the, the good prefix we saw before from Knuth Norris Pratt, well, call it a good suffix. Uh, we can use good suffix for deciding how much to shift, and actually this is independent of this bad character. Bad character might say, hey, you can shift by two and keep going. And the uh, bad or the good suffix heuristic that we'll look at in a second uh, might say, hey, you, you can, in this case, you can shift by five. Well, choose the better out of two and five. Hey, if, I, if I'm allowed to shift by five, I might as well shift by five. So that's what Boyer Moore does. Uh, they look at two different heuristics on, at each step and choose the better one at each step and shift by the bigger amount. Um, good prefix uh, works particularly well, when, especially I think when you have a lot of repetition and repeated sub-patterns within a, a word, okay? So let's go ahead and look at, um, let's look at it real quickly, uh, I think one rule of the <laughs> application of good prefix. I'm looking for, gosh, uh, uh, I'm looking for bro banana brand. In a street, and I'm going to start with the a string, this xxxxx bro banana brow. So if this were an n, I'd find it, but if I'm going to say that my source, my string that I'm looking in doesn't contain it at the beginning. Okay, what are we going to do? We have bro banana breath. Again, we look at the rightmost letter first, and we say, yeah, I have an A. Okay, backtrack. I have an A. Great, I found that. Uh, I have a, oh, I found a B. I was hoping for an R, but I found a B. The... Uh, bad letter, the bad character here says, hey, shift over to align the, the next capital B right under the one that we actually found and would shift by one, okay? But, you know, we can do better because we're like, hey, and again, this is reminiscent of the Newth Morris Pratt. I have this A-N, and I know that I need to line something up that uh, I'm looking for the end, uh, or line something up that has an A-N occurring right here. So for every suffix of my string that I have, okay, the bro banana brand. Um, look at each suffix. There are M of them, five M characters in the pattern. Uh, for each of the M or M plus one suffixes, uh, keep track of, hey, where in the string do you see that same uh, tail occurring in the middle of the string? So A-N. So A-N we see occurring over in the near the end of banana, of bro banana brand, okay? So, you know, I can actually shift over by five, okay? And again, this is Newt Moore's Pratt idea, but going right to left instead of left to right. Um, and saying, hey, I can shift over by this much, and now I can continue on. I can now go look at the end and say, hey, look at here. Ooh, I have an R. And now my choice. 
um, I guess uh, when you only have one letter, when you miss immediately the bad character and the suffix, uh, it's really used the bad character is what you do. Okay, so I shift by two by the bad character suffix and go look again. Now imagine there had been an N here. At this case, I would start looking at the N, looking back, looking back, looking back, finding matches, and I'd find it all the way. Uh, or, undo, undo, uh, if I'd seen an O here, I'd say, oh, well, okay, go ahead, O, go ahead, and by the bad letter, bad character uh, heuristic, shift all the way to so the O of, the o of Bro Banana Brand could, would be lined up, and then continue on from there. And I'd shift, I've just shifted by like eight or something for a nice good win. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's an example. Again, it's in the notes I have each step repeated. Uh, I'll make sure the notes are, are clear. Um, Okay, um, but that very first step was saying, "Hey, we can by this good, uh, the good prefix, or sorry, good suffix, we can go ahead and look at how long that good suffix is related to new chorus Pratt and shift will provide that amount, and then combine them, take the best of each." Okay, that was kind of cool. Uh, so. One thing that as I was looking this over, I was kind of scratching my head. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. We have the, I understand bad character. I understand the good suffix. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Why is bad character even necessary? Doesn't good suffix give us the exact same? Because the good suffix would include that bad letter we just found. Doesn't that do even better, take more into account? Um, and the answer is... Again, the fact that we want to, the, one of the key ideas to get the efficiency is we have pre-computed how much to shift over in each circumstance. Given a certain letter, you find this bad character, how much do you shift over by? Uh, if you've seen this much of a good suffix, uh, and then you see a miss after that, how much do you shift over by? So what you can't immediately pre-compute, or you wouldn't maybe immediately pre-compute, uh, saying, hey, for this suffix here, my pattern, here's my pattern. For this suffix here, where does that same suffix occur earlier in the string? What I was thinking, when I was doing it by hand, what I was doing was saying, hey, look at that, that suffix that I just found and looked at the bad letter. Where does that occur in the string? Well, that's not something that I pre-computed. I looked at the, for, what is it, banana bro brand? I looked at the suffix brand. I'm like, where does brand occur earlier inside the pattern? Uh, but I didn't look where does brand X occur, where does brand Y occur, where does brand Z occur, where does brand everything but the correct character, sorry, other way around. Uh, where does B brand, where does C brand, where does D brand, where does E brand, everything but A brand. Um, where would that occur previously in the pattern? I guess you could do that. In fact, you know that that would be a good uh, project for this class if you want to take this algorithm and say, hey, I want to modify what's out there where they just take the good suffix. I want to take the good suffix plus the one bad letter, see if I can get better skips. Pre-processing, I have more pre-processing to do. Um, I need to, or at least I need to keep a lot more of a table around. Um, it's not clear to me if this is going to be a win uh, in the long run. I have to do that extra pre-processing work. And I think the amount that it pays off is not a whole lot, um, especially in typical cases. But Hey, for a project, look at typical cases, measure it, look at worst cases, look at strings that have a lot of repetitions in, generate 100 million strings that just have a lot of A, B, C, D, and very few of the other letters, and then look at patterns that involve just A, B, C, D, um, and compare augmenting the um, good suffix rule to be, I guess I'd, I'd call it a bad suffix. The good suffix including one bad letter. Sorry, good suffix including one bad letter. Um, okay, so that's just a thought on the project. Again, I'm not concerned about you knowing all the details of string search, but I uh, do think there are a couple of cool ideas that are good to have in your toolbox. Thanks.